What happened? I had a technical error. That's it. Nope. That's all. What happened? Tiny technical error. Oh that's my all. god. I see it. That's all. no. Why? It's gone. What is Cirrus? It's gone. I fixed it immediately. Cirrus did the broke. So <laughs> have, have I have I explained to you the meme that has shown up on, on my Twitch stream? Oh. <laughs> so whenever I have technical difficulties, we have a little fire emoji with a ram stick in the middle that is the sacrificial ram. <laughs> And everybody spams it. Do we, get to, do we get to eat the meat afterwards? Because, like, I could go for some mutton. Uh, anywho, that all said, how's it going, guys? It's Thursday somewhere, but certainly oh, not also, where I'm sitting. Da, 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 da. So, and you, where's yours? Okay, Ocean. Ocean. Where's yours? You're going to tell me I'm overcompensating. Where? Okay. Oh, that's absolutely enormous. <laughs> you, are, you are compensating for something. I am, I am overcompensating right now. Just... I got it. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, I'm <laughs> I'm still waking up as you discovered a while ago. <laughs> I did. I did. So so fun story. Um, the last time I streamed, uh, which I have not been able to get episodes or streams out in the last week because I have had a uh, hell in a handbasket to deal with, which has been the story of my life for like a while now. I'm getting kind of tired of that. I'd like to just make content and be happy. But anyway, people, um, people have been blaming me for the lack of streams and I want people to know <laughs> I've been pressuring you to get streams for it's a favorite true. out out for some time. I'm like, sir, as we should do the thing. And you're like, yes, but shit is happening. And I'm like, we've in particular valid. been trying to get this stream together for like a month. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's on me and all the shit happening around me. Anyway, um, I was getting pizza because the last time I streamed, I had to cut it off earlier than I originally intended because my body went, hey, when was the last time you ate? Uh, do you remember? Because I don't. I'm going to make you fucking suffer, uh, which was <laughs> great and felt amazing and wonderful. And I decided not to have that happen again. So I picked up pizza anyway. Right point is... Valid decision, completely understandable, good idea. I've also sitting here with a jar of Nutella just in case. Uh, but, I got some on my thumb. I have an addiction, don't stop me. Anyway. No, it's Nutella, I understand. I've, I've recently developed a problem with get, uh, getting honey wheat toast and spreading Nutella on it in the morning, and it is... It is amazing. It is that excellent. actually sounds delish. Just like Kroger's selling honey wheat bread I don't have any for honey like wheat toast. a dollar, a dollar oh, for a loaf of honey wheat, and it's it's so good. <laughs> I have problems. Also, the chat is not working, which is just fantastic. How I'm gonna do this and see if it sacrificial fixes rams, please, in the chat. <laughs> and hopefully, like the, the Twitch, head of Rats of Awesome it. PR is not in the chat to steal them. Anyway, I just want. I just want things to work. No, not allowed. So apparently a bunch of your audience doesn't know who I am. Okay, <laughs> I'm getting the so whole, who is this third person? Who is the third person? We should introduce the third person. All right, later. so now to introduce the third Someday. wheel. I, person. Um, person. This is... This person There's a right human. Over. Yeah, guys, uh, far, be it, far be it from me to interrupt the perpetual hammering that goes on between Ocean and Cirrus. Okay, <laughs> look, don't talk about how I hammer Ocean. Okay, it's none of your business. Well, but, we hammer in our own time as our own business, okay? <laughs> but no. that all said, uh, to the left of me, probably, I, I don't know which way you guys are looking on your screen. It's I'm left. pointing that way. Okay, cool. Excellent. Great. Technology. Because, uh, because Ali is to the left of you. So both both literally and politically and all, <laughs> and geographically, all things considered. <laughs> um, though I'm in Georgia, so most people are geographically left to me. To the left, um, yes. Relatively speaking. Uh, anyways, point being, this is Aliakai. Aliakai, uh, much like Ocean, is a filthy, dirty heathen, and we don't like them here because we hate all religions and call them all mental uh, illness. Excuse me, I am not a heathen. I'm a Hellenist. <laughs> I'm not supposed to know the difference because I'm an atheist on YouTube. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. Wow. That thank you for thank you for allowing that joke set up to work the way I expected it to. Cirrus is canceled. I, I could tell that it was a setup because you know this about me, and we've had that yes. conversation. We've had, we've had conversations canceled. about Hellenism before, so 
Um, All right. Um, so Cirrus is actually my very first friend in the community. Um, he kind of brought me into the YouTube space, partially him and Xander Hall, formerly Pig Puncher. We were supposed to do a collaborative thing that ended up kind of getting screwed up because we had problems with the animation team not communicating properly. But currently I co-host two U channels. Uh, one of them is Sticks and Stonehenge, and the other one is formerly The Raging Atheist, now called The Rage, uh, which is Nakazuchi's channel. And tell us about those two channels. So he said Six and, and Stonehenge first. So. And the links are in the description as well for anybody who needs to know that information. What is Six and Stonehenge, Leakai? So Sticks and Stonehenge is formerly Polyology. It is a pagan YouTube channel. And what's special about it is there are five of us and we are all different religions. So um, we're all different pagan religions specifically. Uh, Via is um, an eclectic pagan, uh, kind of leaning towards Wicca. Uh, I myself am a Hellenist. Um, Kengeto is a Celtic reconstructionist. Um, Kalan is a heathen with Sumerian um, reconstructionist uh, syncretism and Wolf is a heathen. So we and, and talk about. And one of those people needs to play fucking Majora's Mask, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> you can take your Twitter drapes to DM Cirrus. <laughs> I'm scared of the snake lady, okay? Everybody is scared of the snake lady. Everybody is scared of the snake lady. Um, she banned Ocean from it, from his own Discord. Like she several she's times. Feared. But um, so the Rage is an interesting allyship uh, channel between pagans and atheists as well as well it originally started off as just not kind of being angry at the world but it has evolved into being a hotspot for interviews for shit shows um and for uh ex-muslim activism with the new apostate alliance show that we've been running every sunday uh, Nak and I run to a uh, show together called Seeing Red, where we talk about indigenous issues, we talk about political stuff, and we do interviews with atheists and pagans, and recently, uh, quite a few interviews with scientists in the field, talking about everything from nuclear energy to epidemiology. Excellent. Uh, I'm, yeah, sure that, like... I'm sure that one of those is a very hot button issue right now. You could yeah, almost say a it's bit. a viral issue. Yeah, I mean, there the name obviously we're we're not allowed to say it. The, like I I'm gonna take Jimmy's lead here and call it the Cuddlebug. The, the Cuddlebug, Cuddlebug is causing problems. Cuddlebug nineteen. <laughs> anyway, well, um, Cuddlebug actually went through our household, which I documented on the Rage. Also, we talked a lot about kind of how my husband and I both had very different symptoms. Hmm. That's a journey. Um, but I. I remember, I remember the rage being the raging atheist, and I remember also kind of like kind of the evolution that that channel's gone through. I remember um, dragging him, kicking and screaming onto a movie review. <laughs> 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 if we can, if we can even call um, scat towel cupcakes uh, thing a movie. Uh, for those of you that that don't know, um, the, the the raging atheist uh, originally was just Nakasuchi, who is awesome, um, like. Uh, and then Aaliyah Kai came onto the channel and it became, it eventually evolved into the rage. Uh, it's like you kind of graduated from being like a, a moderator to a co-host and to um, uh, the, the co-owner of the channel, right? Um, yeah, effectively, he brought me and John Peterson and she who must not be named on as moderators to kind of try to calm the shitstorms that would happen during his uh, Google Hangouts. And it eventually, like, it kind of dwindled down from him having four moderators to just John and I. And then it was eventually, for a little while, John took a hiatus and it was just me. Um, and now John is back, but he hosts mostly his own show. Um, mm -hmm. And Nock and I run. The vast majority of the streams on the channel at this point are actually Nock and I running uh, Seeing Red. And we do almost everything together. He has, like, coffee with Nock streams, and sometimes they do streams together. But most of it is, like, we've got Apostate Alliance on Sundays, and then any other time you stream, for the most part, it's probably the two of us. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's uh, start jumping into things. Um... The first one is apparently we have a fourteen ninety nine dono. Uh, uh -oh. It's a sacrificial ram for all of us. Apparently, it's very. If I could buy a whole ram for fourteen ninety nine, that would actually be really fucking sweet. Um, <laughs> said I'm so glad to see the stream. I've had an awful day, and seeing y'all makes my day so much better. Well, I'm glad that seeing at least Ocean and Aliakai makes your day better. Um, I'm still waking up. 
<laughs> yeah, no, when so, I when I was getting the pizza, I called Ocean just to check in on him. And yes. I, I see in the video chat when I call him just a dark room and the top of his bald fucking head. Um, Correct. He's doing, a, he's doing a Tim Pool right now with the beanie at the moment. Exactly. Uh, though certainly not with the amount of grifting that Tim Tool does. Uh, and it was... Only grifting against the bald head. And it was... I was just like, Ocean, you okay? Yeah! Okay. Did we, you just wake up? Oh, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> we have a dono from Susan um, reminding me to talk about the fact that every Tuesday night at 10.30 EST, we do Secular Literary Circle with oh, nice. uh, Divine Disbelief. It is a secular book club where we go through um, a chapter of a book every single week. Currently, it is Heaven and Hell, A History of the Afterlife by Bart Ehrman. And the link to that book is in the description of every one of those videos. We've only done three so far, so it's pretty easy to catch up. Um, but the whole idea is to bring the community together over something that isn't drama and also to help atheists and pagans alike kind of get through books on their bookshelf or, you know, books on topics that they might be interested in. We're planning on covering everything from philosophy to science to religious history. Um, and the book that we're talking about right now, we've already covered uh, the death of Socrates. We've covered um, the ideas of the Homeric afterlife. And we've talked about uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh and the like attitudes of deaths espoused in the Epic of Gilgamesh. So just with the book that we're covering right now alone, we've gone into some pretty deep dive with historical stuff that you guys might find interesting. Sweet. And speaking yeah, of deep dive... Divine Disbelief, there's another group that's uh, been some good friends of mine as well. They're uh, they're awesome people. Uh, Nathaniel uh, Nathan and Susan. Uh, Nathaniel of Divine Disbelief also was the one who helped me parse out the CARES Act. Uh, at least the little bit of the CARES Act we got into yes. whenever I was talking about that on here, as well as the uh, Georgia... Uh, anti-abortion bill that happened uh, last year. Uh, when it when it comes to uh, political legal stuff, a lot of times I will defer to Nathaniel. Like, hey, you're used to reading this kind of stuff. Can you maybe break this down for me real quick, and we'll do it. We'll describe do what's going on and all that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which has been incredibly helpful. So if you can go check them out, I don't have a link to them right now because that was not in my in my plans there. But if you type, in but we'll Divine get it disbelief, into the description. Um, if you type out divine disbelief for now, you'll be able to get it quickly. And if anybody wants to drop a link in the chat, I can integrate it in right now. Here's what I'll do. Here's what you'll do. You'll do a thing. I'm just gonna go find their channel right now. That's that's a weird thing to and do. You don't need to do that. Drop that shit I'm faster in the chat. Than you. I don't care. We're gonna do it again. We're gonna have that. We're gonna have that link twice over in the chat. That way, if somebody misclicks, they can just hit the right one too. All right. So, anyway, I'm dropping my southern accent for everybody now. Uh, what do you mean accent, uh, Gertrude? I'm gonna talk right now about <laughs> the YSCE. We're gonna okay. bring this shit up. All right. So there is a, to my knowledge, and and uh, Aaliyah Kai can clarify that there is a Hellenist organization that's quite large. I think it's the largest of the uh, three major Hellenist organizations uh, that has some interesting and problematic uh, elements of their uh, closely held statutes, essentially, like their essential beliefs that are in black and white. Um, so, Leah Kai, do you want to expand on that? Also, remember yes. that they get everything I, right. I've got actually, <laughs> I've got all your images on reference. So if uh, when there is one that you need me to grab, just let me know the you, if you've got your titles, because uh, I have them on my computer titled the same way they were on yours. Mm -hmm. So if you just tell me the title to pull up, I will bring it up. Okay. Um, so basically, we in order to start talking about the YSEE, I think we need to lay a little bit of groundwork down. Um, sure. You are correct. They are, as far as I know, the largest of the three major Hellenist organizations that have a presence here in America. Um, I'm pretty sure they're also the largest one in Greece, but I might be wrong. I know there's also uh, Labris and um, one other that are in Greece, but in terms of like American, if you're pagan here, then they are probably the biggest one that you'll come into contact with. And also their members are very prominent in the blog sphere and other places. So the they're kind of New a York, big deal. Right? Yeah, they're headquartered in New York. Um, mm -hmm. That's where they that's where they hold their public ceremonies and things. Right. Um, however, uh, they expanded their reach quite a bit through uh, Anglo Nasios, who was like kind of up there in their hierarchy, as far as I know. Uh, his blog, Hearth of Hellenism, which up until recently was hosted on Pethios, and is still up, but he himself has discontinued it as of late. Yeah, I was going to say that there is a uh, a struggle there 
Um, did Nasios like did did Pathios force him out or did he just quit? Uh, according to his tweet storm, he quit uh, mm -hmm. because from what it implied, this is part of this is going to be speculation based off of the tweets you put up. So right. I'm going to put this as part of this is speculation. I'm going to tell you what's confirmed and what's not. So what is confirmed is that he said that Patheos was refusing to do anything about what he called harassment from another leader in the Hellenic community mm -hmm. called Scarlet Magdalene. What actually happened was Scarlet Magdalene put up an article about how folkism, and we'll get to what that means in a second, is a problem even within the Hellenist community and cited the YSCE for a few of the things that we're about to lay out in a lot more detail. Right. Angelo Nasios felt personally targeted by it, brought it to them, and this is where we start to get speculation. I'm pretty sure he wanted that article taken down or her blog or something, and they wouldn't. And so he threw a hissy fit on Twitter stating that they supported bigotry. And this is, back, now we're back in what I know happened. He threw a hissy fit on Twitter, stated that they were supporting bigotry. And when he didn't get a universal positive like thing back from Twitter, he made his Twitter profile private and like said that yeah, he, had he got a lot videos. of He got a lot of blowback from his post on Twitter because there was a, a struggle uh scarlet this gets into a lot of like little sub movements that showed up in hellenism um this had to do with the xenia declaration am i right yeah um yeah. which the xenia declaration is basically our version of um if i remember right you guys have a declaration 127 yeah yeah Declaration. so this is we're gonna get this gets into some stuff that you know we need to define a lot of terms before people can really that, that don't know What's going on can really catch up with that because if you're going, what is the Xenia Declaration? What, what is Declaration 127? How are they related? What the hell happened? Yeah, I feel uh, like we're going to be losing a lot of the audience very quickly soon. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and that's so, where, and that's where, like, I was like, okay, so we, in order to get into what all happened there, we need to start with what is folkism. Yes, I think so. But to to let you guys know, this this gets really spicy, and that there's uh, elements of homophobia, anti-Semitism. Uh, and just straight up, straight up racism all across the board um, that shows up in, in this particular movement. What are you um, talking about? Racism can't possibly come from an ideology that is wrapped around the idea that there is a genetic link to the gods and that couldn't uh -oh. possibly breed any kind of right. superiority so, complex of any kind. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> So I'll explain folkism a little bit from the perspective of a heathen, and then Aaliyah Kai, if you want to jump in and talk about how it affects Hellenism. Because I think that with, with heathenry, it's much more on the nose. Uh, yeah, with Hellenism, they try to skirt around. Like, as far as I can tell, the YSE tried to reframe a lot of things after the AFA got taken down by heathens. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, it's a little more, it, it's a lot more dog whistly in Hellenism. Right. I would say. So the justification of Hel of of folkism within uh um within heathenry or asatru in this case uh odinism is, is usually a term that's used wotanism is also a term that's used uh the reason why they use wotanism is that they take w-o-t-a-n uh to to as an acronym for will of the aryan nation uh not subtle at all like they it's it's very very on the nose um and they appeal to heimdall whose uh moniker um a kenning for him is the white god, which is meant to be uh, that he is uh, illuminative. But instead, they take it as meaning like a racial thing. Uh, it's very much revisionist. Um, and they take a story of him, um, you know, starting elements of humanity. Uh, not humanity itself, but there's other uh, elements of humanity that he's involved in that uh, sort of establishes a relationship between mankind and the gods. And they take this as being that white people are descended from the white god Heimdall um, and roll with it. It's very mythic literalist. It's very uh, on the nose racist interpretation and very revisionist. Um, but through that, you wind up getting this idea where they start making a justification of saying, look, um, uh, Asatru is specifically a native European religion. Therefore, uh, only Europeans should have access to it. You should only engage with it if you have European ancestors. Uh, and they which, get very frustrated if you are of mixed race. That means that you've betrayed your ancestors and that kind of thing. Creates a um, really weird thing when you consider the fact that there are people who, I, these are a few examples of them, 
that try to link culture and genetics. Yes. When culture is never, has never had anything to do with genetics historically, right. like as an example, um, my partner, Aaron, she is Japanese. Genetically, she's technically American. She was born to American parents, but she grew up across the pond. And as a result, all of her culture, all of her mannerisms, all of her everything is very, very much Japanese culture because right. it's not about what's in your blood. There's nothing fucking in your blood. Um, that I, I'm very much a physicalist, so essentialism of any kind sounds really fucking dumb to me. Um, but it's it's about where you are, which is where this mix-up happens over here, where you have this mingling of culture and genetics together to try to argue that this works in a religious sense. Uh, somebody has brought up in the chat, uh, Theo's story uh, said Volkism inspired... Um, basically a Nazi religion. Uh, and if you want to go back to um, history, the, this I, these ideas originated in uh, Nazism, specifically with uh, Alfred Rosenberg, um, wanted to make it the national religion of the, the Reich. Um, so, you know, those ideas, while, you know, not, uh, like Nazi Germany was defeated, a lot of the ideas kept going. And some of them were still kicking around in scholasticism. So when, you know, you had like reconstructionists popping up, there was suddenly, there was this like divide between in the in the seventies in heathenry between, you know, people that were uh, using this to justify their white supremacy and people that were more uh, going about, a, <laughs> I would consider a much more honest approach to history because these concepts didn't exist prior to the 19th century. Um, so you know and people argue back and forth on that but it's like you didn't have genetic relation to religion before people knew about genetics it just wasn't a thing so well uh, yes and no if you remember before we knew anything about genetics uh we actually had already developed classifications for of race different yeah. races of human like the the term caucasian specifically referring to like ethno-european white folk that word predates any understanding of genetics as we would understand of it today so yes and no what i'm what i'm saying is that as far as making it a connection to religion and race mm. and then getting into a lot of like you know you get you get the proto version of that with nazi germany and then it was expanded upon by a heathen named uh stephen mcnallan who's a political activist uh mm. now is a more overt white nationalist but at the time he wrote a paper called metagenetics that went into how the gods are in people's genetics uh, and started saying basically that if you um, you cannot follow certain faiths unless you have these ancestors in your blood, and then went into the idea that different pantheons were battling uh, in over immigration policy. <laughs> so, uh, like he was being absolutely ridiculous about it. But a lot of people believed him. A lot of people got on board with it. Um, but also that uh, those set of ideologies wound up being. Um, within the heathen community very like heavily condemned up to the point of being even until recently this was an issue uh then the afa which is the organization that was started by this guy uh really like he stepped down and the new guy stepped up and the new guy was much more like overtly racist whereas stephen mcnallan was still able to kind of talk around the issue uh and then heathens responded to the overt racism that wound up being announced by this guy with a document called declaration 127 which was essentially these guys are free to have their fucking opinion but we will not associate them and they're free to stand alone that we do not we do not condone in our religion uh racism uh homophobia and the various forms of bigotry that were expressed by the uh, AFA and if you wish to you can google declaration 127 it's the number 127 and you can find the text of this document and you can see the various heathen organizations that signed the document when it happened um, so that carries on like that's the very overt form of folkism where you have to have this genetic link to uh, ancestors that practice this religion otherwise you're not good enough this it's it's pretty like you cannot you're not allowed in the club uh essentially um hellenism uh especially with the in the sense of the yace has a much more subtle form of a very similar thing uh Lika, do you want to go into it 
Yeah, so within Hellenism, so this isn't something that's unique to the YSE. There's a version of this that some other Hellenist sects ascribe to, but I would say that the YSE's version is probably the closest to what you would define as folkism in terms of, you know, hey, ethnicity actually matters here. So the YSE puts forward the idea that anybody who wants to worship the ancient Greek gods has to Hellenize, and that ethnic Greeks, particularly those still living in Greece and practicing within the YSE, which the YSE in Greek translates approximately to the Supreme Council of Ethnic Hellenes, so that should kind of give you an idea of what this organization is like to begin with. But they believe okay. that ethnic Greeks, particularly those in Greeks, get to define what Hellenization means, they also put forward this idea that there's only one particular theological acceptable way to view things, namely a very bizarre version of Platonism that this they put forward. Very, this sounds very no true Scotsman. Like, yeah, and that's and it's something that uh, like Angelonasios on his blog at Hel Hearth of Hellenism was notorious for. He had an entire post that he put up that basically goes into you know don't call yourself a Hellenist if you're not trying to Hellenize. Don't call your you know call yourself something else. Call yourself a pagan. Da da da. If you wanted to base yourself, and he also had lots of screeds against neo pagans. And part of the reason I bring him up so frequently when we're talking about the YSE is he was one of their most forward faces. Like his blog was actually one of the first that I ran into when I first got into Hellenism before I realized how many, you know, red flags there were on it. Uh, you got a couple of super chats, it looks like. Hey, we got one from Real Luck. Uh, I'm black, but I have a German ancestor. Do I get to play? Um, oh, I'm going to say something really According horrible. to the AFA, no. Uh, uh, well, I was going to make a really bad joke, but it's probably best I don't. Yes. <laughs> Locke, I'll, I'll send you the joke in DMs. You'll be fine. Um, and then Z Commander... Uh, for four ninety nine says apparently Zeus won't sleep with your wife unless you're insert race here. Right. Um, uh, but I, I, I will say as well within heathenry these people are a minority. The overwhelming majority of heathens do not hold to this view. Um, I and... would say within Hellenism the idea that ethnic Greeks decide what Hellenization is is a minority view. But I would say it's probably about a fifty fifty split between people who think that you have to adopt a full-blown ancient greek style philosophy in order to be mm -hmm. part of the faith and those who think that um it that can divide. fit within modern culture so for us it's a lot more of a split but the yse are a minority in the sense that they think that modern ethnic greeks should decide officially what that means it, there's and i think that there's a the difference in recon reconstructionism for those that don't know or the the we're reconstructing ancient faiths into a modern setting um that the there's a lot more documents with uh hellenism than there are with heathenry mm -hmm. um which has allowed heathenry to be much more open and i guess it's, it's been able to um it allows for a little bit more room in, in that revivalism and eclecticism in order to fill some gaps i'd with... say about 50 50 we've talked about this like yeah. in terms of actual practice We've got about as much documentation as y'all do okay, um, that's because fair. they didn't that's write fair. about practice. There's a lot more of our theology and a lot more mythology that has been recorded. And like the philosophical tradition obviously has hundreds of books, but like the actual practices were very rarely written about, if at all, they were generally referenced with a in the normal way or in the right. usual way. Um, so most of our practice reconstruction has happened in the same way that yours did, which is either through like constructing through mythology or, you know, through scholarly excavations and remnants mm -hmm. of ancient homes. Yes, yes. Uh, so anyway, let's get into a little bit more of the specifics on the uh, YSCE. Since we, so we have like a kind of a general idea of what folkism is, uh, how it applies to both of these movements. Um, I guess, can, is, there, is there any clarifications that you want to make to the, the Hellenism version of, of folkism that is Again, because the differences are super subtle and they're very, it's harder to spot, I think. Because well, like, the like is so on the nose. It's more colonialist. It's more this idea that you have to give up your sense of self and culture in order to worship the gods, rather than the idea that you have to have a specific ancestry. But again, we'll get into, there's a privileging of Greek ethnicity that is particularly strong in the Greek YSCE. That's mm -hmm. a little less so in the American YSCE. And I actually sent Sarah screen caps from both the Greek YSCE website and the American one to show the difference in the way that they treat things. Um, so we'll start off with the sections from the theology book, because this kind of gives you an idea of where their like religious justification for this bigotry starts. 
um the the one that says about religions in general um they their theology book is divided into three sections there's the first section where they define their religion and where they talk very badly about the hi history of religion in general there's a second section where they talk very badly and describe platonism horrendously and then there's the third section which is the majority of it which is rituals and we're primarily going to be quoting from the first section of their theology book i don't recommend going and buying it personally um but the, the i found it for free I think. <laughs> wound up getting I, a pdf of it yeah you can find them it's a little bit harder to find but you can find them so this first section is called about religions in general uh they state there are two kinds of religions the natural and the founded or revelatory the former developed within human societies as inseparable organic parts and evolved together over millennia the latter first appeared 2500 years ago and attempt to shape the world in the image they need a better editor by the way You'll find this over and over throughout these quotes. The, an attempt to shape the world in the image of the person that founded them, either because God spoke directly to them, or they themselves are God incarnate, or the messenger of God. So uh, there's a footnote there, and it's actually the fourth image that I sent, Cirrus. Um, we'll get to that in a second. But um, basically, they start off with this idea that there are religions that have evolved within cultures, and then there are religions that prophets start. Which, in the modern day, most people would immediately rec recognize a prophet-based religion as a cult. But um, I kind of agree with them a little bit here in the sense that the revelatory religions I would classify as being like, you know, Christianity and the Muslim religion. Both of those very clearly didn't just evolve naturally out of something else. Um, but I disagree with the classification that they're about to put in the footnote, which again is the fourth screenshot that I sent Cirrus in this section. Yep, um, and that's... Uh, the foot, the footnote. Yeah, I claims... think it's a very obvious reference to Christianity, almost specifically. Yeah, Both, like the timing is fairly perfect for that. Yeah. Um, and I need to chase my cat off of my mic because she's being adorable, but you guys don't want to hear her purr right now. Um, but uh, the footnote there, that little two, it says Jewish monotheism in reality was invented during the so-called Babylonian captivity. Um, and that next footnote is talking about direct versus indirect violence um, and getting rid of other faiths. They have this big long thing about how Christianity basically destroyed other religions. And again, yeah, the colonialism that kind of drove the spread of Christianity did that. But we're about to get into where their opinions start to get yikesy. They start off with some things that a number of pagans might agree with, you know, taking the honey and putting it in with the medicine. Right. Like, hey, you know, there are two kinds of religions. There's those that are normal. And then there's the, the revelatory profit based ones that are kind of driven by ego or whatever. But then we get into what are the properties of the Hellenic ethnic religion? This is the second screenshot that I sent, Cirrus. I don't have them organized by the... the... What's the, the title on it? The, title. Uh, the characteristics of Hellenic ethnic religion. Thank you. I don't have... So when I put them in the folder, uh, they're organized alphabetically. <laughs> <laughs> According to file name. <laughs> but, you know, so just telling me the, the which one it is doesn't help. But that does. I've got that one pulled up right now. It's... Okay, it's two parts, so I'm going to go ahead and show the first part first. Yeah, yeah we'll because... go through it and then move into the next one. So the first part is the natural religions of the Hellenes is the Hellenic ethnic religions and its characteristics are the following. It is indigenous. Its theology and religious practices were developed through the millennia of this specific geographical area and the Hellenic where the Hellenic nation lived freely. The idea of a Hellenic nation is kind of problematic. It was more like nation states. Um, but, like, that's a neither here nor there problem. Um, I guess to the next one. The second, it is natural, it developed locally. That's basically saying the same thing. It is organic. One Again, second. Sir, let me know when you got the second screenshot up. It's already up. The minute oh, you said okay, it, good. it's no, up. Never mind. I've got uh, it. The fourth yeah, is, it's... it is polytheistic, uh, which requires the multiplicity of gods. That's so good. It is ethnic in nature. This is where we start to get into a little bit of an issue. It has its own set of specific ethnic pantheons and its own unique body of pro cosmological narratives reflecting the worldview, the ways, and the tradition of the nation of the Hellenes. So, again, this idea that it's that like ancient Greece was one nation is kind of an issue, like, right? But the idea that it is ethnic in nature, well, what do you mean by ethnic? 
because right. a, like ancient Greece was a multiplicity of different cultures. Like there were, you know, like the Spartans didn't even agree, agree with the Athenians on how mythology worked or even have the same festival calendar, let alone knowing that, you know, other groups like, you know, Ethiopians, like people from Egypt, people from all over, you know, that area lived within ancient Greece. So this idea that it was one unified nation is entirely modernistic. That I was one of the things that uh, surprised me when I was taking a history class is I went into uh, I went into college thinking oh yeah the Greeks were because you look you, you when you don't know the subtleties of uh, that era of history you just go there were the Romans and the Greeks and the Egyptians and you know it's like the there's that the it's very then, it's very rigid right so when I'm sitting there in a history class and my uh, teacher says my my professor is like. So there wasn't any Greek city-state necessarily, or there wasn't any Greek civilization. It was, there were city-states. There are the Corinthians, there are the Spartans, there are the Athenians. And if you're gonna be looking at them in terms of civilizations, each of these are separate civilizations. You don't have the Greek civilization at yeah, any point. Yeah, because they're all, they're all, it's like saying, um, it's like if someone in modern day were to try to say uh, the American civilization as an example, and then you go, well, are we talking about how people live in New York? Are we talking about how people live in Florida? Are we talking about California? Because there's very distinct, even though technically, like legally, we are all one country. Yeah, one, there is an American greater culture that you can discuss, but even within that, there's several ethnicities there's and cultures. There's way too much. Even within know. New York. <laughs> New York being like the melting pot, as right. it were. Um, I've pulled down the image for the time being and put it back up when we need it. Right. So um, that's that's where you start to get into, you know, a couple of like dog whistles that there might be a problem here um, is when they start talking about how this is ethnic in nature and they start talking about a single Greek state or a single Greek nation. Again, if you read the theology book itself, there's a lot more than we're going to go over here that is problematic in these opening passages. But we wanted to highlight some of the biggest issues just to begin with for the overview here. I'm going to be deep diving more into this on my series, The Pissed Off Polytheist on the Rage. So if you guys go and subscribe over there um there are videos worth coming in the next couple of weeks on what sure. folkism is and on the YSEE um but this is where we start to get into they get in they go deeper into the idea of what monotheism is in as opposed to ethnic religions and we pulled a particular paragraph out of that um it's the one that starts with the irrational and contrary to nature right. um give me one second I can pull that up versus our producer today I say I've, I'm producer every day. Um, it it begin. Uh, what is the title of it? Uh, it's it. It doesn't have a title. It's the irrational it's the and contrary to nature demand for the homogeneity. It's Jewish expansionism. Might be the name of the the file. Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. No, I just I just need file name. File, <laughs> file name okay. is Jewish expansionism. Yeah, I got it. I got it. File name Hill. This is when we start to get into some of the more overtly. So, this is this is where I start to realize that Aliakai secretly hates me. <laughs> <laughs> me, so, I, do, I just need file name Kai. Okay, I'm gonna give you everything but that. Screw you, Cyrus. I hate you. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. It's up. All right. So this is uh, a section where they're talking about the history of how you know ancient Greece basically got quote, colonized, they, the way that they use that term is problematic, but anyway. The irrational and contrary to nature demand for the homogeneity of humanity has a very specific starting point. It was born historically at a time when, until then, geographically contained, Jewish monotheism turned into expansionist, proselytizing and genocidal actions in the guise of what we know as Christianity. They need a better editor, this is so hard to read. A few centuries later, the second arm of the expansion followed with the formation of Islam. This is some JQ shit. This is yeah. This, this is, is some literally Jewish going. Shit. This is literally some kid, right? Okay. This is this is what I'm hearing. Okay. And please tell me if this is wrong. There's some kid sitting there going, "Okay, look, look, Timmy. It started with the Jews, okay? And then when they found out that." Judaism wasn't doing really well then they got a prophet and called it a messiah but they but here the conspiracy gets really deep they did a lot of infighting to make it look like that wasn't their plan oh, and then and then 
when they, when they only got a third of the world populated with Christians, they said, you know what? People aren't going to buy it if they're winning too easy. So they made another sect, and this sect also hates Jews. But Wait, this is an idea that Muhammad was a Jewish conspiracy? This is, that's basically and what so this is. And so was Jesus. Yeah, th this is the idea that all okay. expansionist religion, at least all the Abrahamic expansionist religions, are part of a Jewish conspiracy and cabal. The Ju the the Jewish religion itself wasn't doing it, so they, they tried again. They rolled the die and said, okay, we learned from Judaism when we tried to take over the world. Let's try again, but this time with Jesus. And here's the best part. Some people will think he's white. That's that's what I'm hearing. Eliakai. Is, is my interpretation of a small child being a, a freaking moron accurate to what you're reading? Pretty much, yeah. Like, that, that about hits the nail on the head. Like, hey, That's this shady, the shady group of Jewish people got together one day and were like, hey, there's not enough of us. You know what we really need? We need somebody that they're going to think is a white dude to, like, tell everybody that it's cool to be Jewish and that they have to or they're going to burn. I kind of want to die a little bit now. Like, hearing that actively, t you know the term uh, staring into the abyss, where, like, just for a moment, you realize that actually things might be better were I not here. That just happened. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a stare into the abyss moment. Like, hearing that three-year-old child's Alex Jones impersonation. Looked into the abyss in the void, and then you heard Loki giggle. <laughs> the sad thing is, is that you like the the brilliant thing though is that you got it so perfectly because you have to deal with these people so often on your channel. Like you start yeah. to understand the mindset too fucking well True. after you've done that True. long enough. <laughs> it's I hate that you're right because the issue is that you can only do the Alex Jones impersonation impersonation so many times. Uh, you know, actually, right. you know what? Does this call for that? Does this call for Alex Not Jones? Yet. Not yet. Not yet. It's gonna get worse from here. Okay, cool. Because we got a fan art in, and I and I hate it. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, let's let's take a quick break for the fan art before we start to get into what makes them even worse than just the beginning. Because we're guys, keep in mind, we're about to dive into a deep well of crazy, and this is just the beginning. This is the the easy stuff. Oh boy! It, it, all it, right. Sura says, "Big the cat," and I want to. Jack, just so you know, the next time that you come over for a visit to my house for an anime convention, I am handing you a sword, and I am also handing you your ass. Um, but let's see the fan art. It's already up. I'll get that. I have delayed reactions to everything because I'm watching the YouTube stream. Are you sure it's not like an internal problem? It is always an internal problem. <laughs> Ocean.exe is buffering. <laughs> Okay, guys, like for all the pagan viewers, we need some sacrificial ram in the chat for ocean sanity. Please. Man, it's still not up on my end. Oh, wait a minute. I know why. Because you didn't that put it up? That was my bad. I So, okay, so here's the thing. If you use Streamlabs in studio mode, putting things on the screen does not automatically show it up. You have to hit the transition button. Oh. I didn't hit the transition button. Th what is this? Okay, guys, press F to pay respect for Sirius's skills. <laughs> press H if you think I'm a good producer. Press G if you think I need to hire one. <laughs> uh, and F to pay many respects. And All F of the to pay S. many respects. LOL, now it's there. Okay, see? Now, okay, all right. Okay, now the, now the, the chat is very F. <laughs> the chat is very G. It is also very G. F and G. <laughs> so the the next sort of portion of this, we, we get this idea that, all right, they think they're ethnic. They think they're, you know, they're special. We get, um, this is where we need to transition from the theology book to where they assume if you have this theology book, chances are you're probably already a member. Right. Right. Like you either bought right. it online or, you know, because it's actually kind of hard to find if you're not looking for it. Um, this is where we go to their FAQ. This is the, you know, this is their frequently asked questions on their website. This is like what the face that they put in the world, right? So there are two different FAQs because this is an organization that started in Greece and has an American branch. 
And it's interesting how the two different branches actually answer these questions when you start to confront them about it. Uh, in the FAQ for the Greek site, which the uh, that would be dormant ethnic uh, for the file name. All right, let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. They have a very interesting answer to the question, do you think that modern day Greeks are the natural descendants of, of ancient Hellenes? You said this is where you start ethnic, to get- Which one? Uh, dormant ethnic. Dormant ethnic, okay, there we go. That explains it. I have it up in three, two, one, boom. So the, the question posed again is, do you think the modern day Greeks are natural descendants of ancient Hellenes? Ethnically, yes. The same notion was in the minds of the prominent figures who led the revolution in 1821 and from its very start spoke about ethnic uprising after 26 centuries under foreign rule. The ethnic conscience of Hellenes born in Greece and abroad survived throughout the centuries-long tyranny of the Byzantines and the Ottomans, as clearly demonstrated in the circle of Platon Gemistos, and returned to Greece in the 17th and 18th century with the Enlightenment and other revolutionary groups. It must be made clear that no ethnos is negated by any occasional lack of expression of ethnicity due to external circumstances. Even a handful of people expressing and keeping it alive is more than enough for an ethnos to survive. This is what happened with the Hellenic ethnos throughout the centuries of Christian and Ottoman rule. Non-ethnic people, excluding those who have bowed down, who have been indoctrinated and conspicuously hate their ethnicity, are simply dormant members of their ethnos. Any Greek that's a Christian hates themselves. Yeah. Any Greek that's a Christian hates themselves and has bowed down to a dominant group. Well, first of all, we got a donation from Zaurok Chaos, uh, which is chaos forever, fuck bigots. And I agree with that. I can, I would agree with that for a penny. I don't, I don't need $5 to agree with that. <laughs> Same. But so, this, keep in mind, this is from Greece. So this is like the head organization. This is the original organization, not the spinoff. Right. So this is, there is a common uh, trend with this. And you see this with uh, claims within in witchcraft. You see this yeah. within heathenry as well, that there are claims that people say, and druidry especially. I've seen this a lot with druidry, <laughs> saying that there is a bloodline that goes back in time all the way to, oh, God, what's going on here? I'm, hold on, hold on. Someone's it's, dealing in ice over here. So I need to actually make it to where people can um, see. Hi, Raz, bye, Raz. <laughs> Raz. So, so I, I said I needed a drink. <laughs> and Raz, Raz comes, comes in. in with a with a mason jar full of ice. <laughs> and Aaron comes in with a two liter of soda and just fills, fills the jar back up. Not, not how All right. I wanted so, that to happen. But okay. So let's go let's go into this a little bit because I've seen this happen a lot with, with witchcraft, with druidry, with heathenry, and now with Hellenism, that uh there is a secret group of people that kept the religion alive throughout the uh, oppressive point of Christianity showing up. This this, that happens this with preservation freaking... that this preservation kept the religion in its original state untouched and unaltered throughout this period of time that happened with freaking the nifb as well they did Does this it? they did the the nifb yeah, they, they have the, secret christianity going back to like peter or some shit yes okay. they do the same shit where they go um it was it was a discount hovind did this, which means he pulled it from Kent, and Kent is old IFB and associates with the NIFB as well. They did the same shit where he goes, no, you don't understand. There were secret Christians from 300 AD onward that mm -hmm. kept it alive until 1611 when King James pa finally penned the true version of the Bible, the King James version. And this James is all version. conjecture. That it's not based and on Mormonism. Anything. Mormonism has a version of that too, where they basically claimed that the priesthood was passed down by the apostles through some sort of direct ceremony and had to be restarted by Joseph Smith through a special gift from God. And that's why the Mormon priesthood is the only like bloodline priesthood left. Yeah. Just, we so, have a bunch of super chats like all at once. So yeah, everybody came we have in a, all at once here. Thank you guys. So I, rec so I will say this, first of all, I am I am happy receiving super chats again because I am getting paid by YouTube. Secondly, um, to let everybody know what YouTube's paycheck went to, it went to like two hundred dollars for the month, which is just fan freaking fantastic to live off of. Drop so, some super chats, my dudes. So thank you guys for the super chats. You guys are literally half the reason I'm able to eat. Uh, the other half is Patreon. Um, so 
Five dollars came in from uh, Princess Aircat. Love you guys. I was adopted by a Greek immigrant family and hold citizenship. Am I Greek enough for the crazies? Uh, it depends. Uh, adoption is not something they recognize. Have you apparently. washed yourself in the Greek ethnokoi? <laughs> that's that's. I know that that's serious, but <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I, it's, it's like when I did the, the conspiracy theory child bit. I know it's serious. I know people take it seriously, but holy crap, does it, it is it not laughable? Right. So um, let me, there was, there's a, there's a, a, what I talked about, like what the belief is about secret religion coming through and that the NIFB holds this shit too. Let me talk a little bit about the reality because I think Druidry is the best way to explain the reality of it. Um, so with Druidry you had uh, it, the, the Caledonia Scotland was a place where people would travel to study uh, Druidry according to the Romans. They, they believed that Caledonia modern day Scotland was like the holy land for the Picts uh, and for the for the um, Celts in general um, and when it was slowly being invaded and so on eventually it got Christianized uh, and Druids were uh, theological leaders also political leaders and sometimes military leaders within that culture uh, as it got Christianized Druids still existed into the uh, thousands AD but they were essentially relegated to the point of court magicians and Druidry evolved extensively during that period and became Christianized and became more uh, theater magician based. And then uh, before it eventually just died out. It's now, like, it didn't, it, there is no line of existence that is in any way reasonably traceable. So, uh, and I wanted to respond to the chat for two seconds. When I said bloodline stuff, that's why I said it has to be passed directly like by the priesthood. I was comparing it to this idea that there was a religion that's been passed down through, right. you know, secret. Like there's this idea that the priesthood was directly passed through rituals and that got broken and now Joseph Smith had to reestablish it. I wasn't saying it was connected to genetics in any way. I was saying that religiously that's what they claim. Yeah, passed down person to person. person. There's, a, there's a line. And... Uh, with with druidry it gets to there's a genetic line there's a father it's it's passed down by family and i am related if if you've been pagan and you've gone to a couple of events you have met somebody who have said my great 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 grandfather was a druid you know and that the, they'll they'll I'm go a into trad with, i'm a fridge from a trad family I'm from a, a long trad tradition witch. going back to the roman period or something like that they'll say and, that shit and, and you know what the you know what true. the best answer to that usually is mm. i nor the gods give a shit Right, like that because truthfully, granted, I'm an the atheist. Hellenist version of that is that's hubris. Like, granted, I'm an atheist, so there is obviously a little bit of issue with me saying that specifically. But no, but I'll say it. But <laughs> I, because of what I know, mainly because I know both of you and Callan and Wolf, and I talk to at least some of you uh, about religion and things like that. I also know a little bit. Also, I know that uh, Raz is very into. Um, the religion and its history and that or the multiple different variants of religion and its history. So I know from conversations about the history and the lore where certain polytheistic faiths are, are concerned that none of the gods would care nor right. should they care. And if we're speaking from the frame of a theist, if the gods don't care, then why the hell should I? Right. That's very, that's, it's very true. Well, um. and it's, uh, it's particularly <laughs> problematic within the Hellenist faith because, like, for example, in ancient Greece, birthdays were not celebrated because birth was considered itself to be a polluting event. There's a concept called miasma. I'm not going to get too deep into it. It's not sin. It's nothing like sin. It's basically antinatalism. Birth, death, um, defecation, other things pollute you spiritually, right? So this idea of taking pride in your bloodline is foreign because, like, birth itself is actually a problem in terms of, like, the way that miasma works. Again, it's a lot more complicated than I can get into on the stream. It needs a whole stream by itself. But that idea of this obsession with bloodline is anti-Hellenic at its core. So shall we get through some super chats and then get back to the next screenshot? Yes. 
Uh, cool. So the next one we have right now is Z Commander uh, 9088 uh, for 4.99. Uh, Lawful is better than Chaotic number one. Uh, me and you really have some disagreements there. Uh, I, I know you're disagreeing with Zalrock personally. Um, uh, did you get the one from Princess Ericat? <laughs> yes, that we'll was get, the, we're going to get to them. Yeah. Okay. That was the first one that I did. Um, but and then they say, uh, and to get more off topic, put these people in an alignment chart, throw some NIFB people on or something while you're at it. The problem with putting NIFB people on an alignment chart is that the top row would be fucking empty. And that's right. kind of a, that's kind of an issue with an alignment chart. How are you going to They're pull, basically all lawful evil. Like, how are you going to pull lawful good and chaotic good out of anybody in there? How? Um, D... Dolphin A, uh, da, 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 scrolling up. Uh, D. Dolphe for nine ninety nine says so. As an Emporium mutt born in, uh, as a Europium mutt born in America, where does that leave me? I'm so confused. So I'm a descendant of both the Norse and the Greek gods at the same time. By their logic, uh, all the Fs to pay respects. My answer to that before I'll, I'll Ocean, tell you what it is. My answer before ahead. Ocean gets in there is that the problem was you were searching for logic. Right. <laughs> True. The <laughs> What the the way that the way that some of them address? I'll tell the way that the uh, the racist heathens will 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 address this. Uh, and I'm going to say Odinist from now on, or actually Wotanist. I'm going to say Wotanist. The way that the Wotanist would would address that would be um, to say, like, if you have any European ancestry, then any European faith belongs to you. Now. Uh, now you have to have pure European ancestry. Like if you have some other ancestry, then that negates the gods in your genetics for whatever reason. That's I, mean, I don't know how, but that's what they say, um, or how they know this, or what the you know. There's no support for it, but this is what they say. They're they're like if you are like say half black or something like that, then uh, that has eliminated the gods from your genetics. Um, but if you have Let's say that you are like traditionally Italian, like your ancestry is full-blooded Italian going back. And there's plenty of people that can say this about themselves. Um, you would still be acceptable to follow the Norse faith to Stephen McNallan's logic because he believes that this is a faith for Europeans and that it is a indigenous faith of European culture. So if you have that European ancestry, especially at a, to a point of purity, then uh, you should not only uh, can you, but you should follow um, his version of the faith. So the YSEE version of that, there's kind of two different thoughts on it. The first is what we're about to get into, um, which is the YSEE's answer to what it, the ethnic thing, um, the ethnic, like our people, descendants of the ancient Hellenes. If you don't worship either the Greek gods or the, um, the Norse gods, then you hate yourself because right. they're denying your ancestry. The second version of that answer comes from Anglonasios himself, who states that he believes that the Greek gods basically are either the only gods or they rule over all the other ones. So basically, if you worship, if you choose to worship the Norse gods instead of the Greek ones, not only do you hate yourself, but you're also worshiping the lesser deities, which by the way, I completely disagree. I believe that my gods and ocean gods are real and I just don't worship his gods. Right, I would disagree with that as well, and to, to, to make fucking clarity, I would disagree completely with the, the McNallan logic that I laid out earlier. Um, it's it's I ridiculous. Have, I also have to get through the rest of the Super Chats real quick. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, we have, these ones are shorter, thankfully. Uh, $20 from the Real Lock Get Food Fam. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I got food beforehand to avoid blood sugar issues, but... I will use that in later, uh, the 21st of next month when that comes in, hopefully. Uh, Fourth Dimensional Jake, $2. Super Chat. It's Super Chat called Super Chat via the Super Chat function. Perfect. <laughs> um, from What the Craft, uh, $2. Unbroken Bloodline Claims equals exclusivity bullshit. Yep. Yep. That's a thing we all agree with. Uh, Jack and Quill for $10 uh, says boop, uh, which confuses boop. me because it means that Jack and Quill is using the money that I pay him for... Uh, Patreon slides uh, to pay me for YouTube stuff. I'm very confused about how this transactional relationship works. Um, <laughs> the Lonely Stargazer. Well, after, for... after YouTube takes their take, of course. <laughs> True, Daddy. Like, y'all, y'all just to need some. to talk about what money y'all need to give to each other and save it so that YouTube doesn't take and YouTube and Patreon don't steal your shit. Uh, Lonely Stargazer for five dollars as an atheist, which I sincerely appreciate. This stream. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Brutus Magnuson uh, for one ninety nine. I know two black brothers who make Mjolnir uh, pendants. Nice. Badass. Uh, from Frey for $5. It's funny because them and Golden Dawn both have a ton of overlap, but also the groups seem to dislike each other for religious differences. This is like how... This is like how Islam and, or not Islam, uh, extremist Islam, uh, like your ISIS sects and the mm -hmm. NIFB have a lot of overlap as far as methodology is concerned, but they would absolutely uh, never work together in any way, shape or form. This is very similar to how like the KKK and the AFA don't get along. But they're like, but they're they, the same thing. Right, well, it's one of them's Christian, the other one's dirty pagans, right? So you have like, uh, and, and you've seen, like there have been points where like white supremacist groups to put their differences aside and all that kind of shit. It seems like it's, but they're also the the hallmark of those movements is that they fight each other a lot. Um, that they they cannot put aside disagreements like Christianity versus paganism, um, or even paganism up, versus paganism because right. there's a lot of like what appears to be snarky asides at the AFA that's in this religious literature even as they're trying to justify their own ethno nationalism. Mm -hmm. And, and the arguments for their ethno-nationalism, like if you look at the arguments that the KKK puts forward for Christian ethno-nationalism, ethno it directly contradicts um, the arguments that the AFA would put forward for a uh, ethno-nationalism that is um, also true. We also have a $2 super chat from 4th Dimensional Jake. Uh, NIFB, very young children would be ca uh, chaotic good. Uh, I, as somebody who was once a child, I don't think calling me good would have really, uh, been an accurate statement. And I was IFB because Pensacola Christian Academy, that's literally how that funding came to be. Um, Jack and Quill for the $6 and 90 pennies. It's called being friend. You nerd fight me. But I, I did. Liter I, I did, like, literally, Anime Weekend Atlanta, I, I, I handed you a sword. I literally fought you, Jack. <laughs> I've literally already done that. <laughs> um, and Casper Lascara for $5, do a consume. And now we are back on track. Uh, Sir Obscura asked a question that I think will get us back on track as well. Uh, she says, does this mean that I can't worship pa uh, any pagan gods because I'm mixed Aztec and Irish, according to these racist fucks? Now... Um, so the answer to that is, uh, I initially said no, or that, that they wouldn't be able to uh, worship these gods. However, the answer to that is actually, yes, you would be able to. You would just be considered a lesser because of your um, compromised ancestry. Well, and there's an implication within the YSE that because the ethnic Greeks get to decide what Hellenization means, you know, those who are not ethnically Greek, there's an implication that they're lesser. They right. they don't say it outright anywhere, but it's again, like a one drop you know, rule with Jim Crow. Ethnic Greeks get to decide Crow. what it is. It's like so how this is a perfect segue into that. So it's do we like have a how screenshot most that... nationalists will not say that we don't think the other racists or it, when you take a white nationalist, many times they won't say, well, black people are lesser than us. They'll just say, no, 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 no. We just think we are better. Right. Those are the same thing. Those are the same fucking statement. Right. Yeah, so since we're getting deeper into this, uh, the screenshot, um, this is one of the two SS uh, screenshots, uh, Cirrus. It's the SS0522, okay. um, the one that is, I think it's 1257.33 is the first one, the one that says, why do you refer to yourselves as ethnicos? I have that coming up very shortly. Do, 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 do. Oh, that is dense. That is a that is a dense bit of text. Pull that right up. There we go. Yeah, there's actually two questions on there, um, but one of them they were dumb and didn't bold because they're very bad. Whoever their webmaster is is bad. Uh, so the first section is why do you refer to yourself as ethnicos? In general, the term ethnicos refers to those who live and conduct themselves in accordance with their native identity and virtues. Keep in mind this comes from the American YSE website. You'll start to see the difference in the way the two organizations think a little bit here. The American organization is much more concerned with covering up their ethnic status. This is where you start to see a lot of the dog whistling. A more specific definition refers to those who do not reject their identity due to conversion of, to one of the induced monotheistic creeds. These Christianity and Islam. Judaism, the parents of the ab above mentioned face, refers to all non-Jews as goyim, beasts. Side note, goyim actually translates to nations. It's been used as a derogatory for non-Jewish people in like modern day like Hebrew, but in ancient Hebrew, goyim actually just meant nations. 
Yeah, but nowadays, whenever we see Goyim, it's it's almost exclusively uh, the Goy, the the person who is like subject to the Jews but not Jewish. That's how we've how we've been seeing it online for the last what five years. Yeah, and they're trying to claim, um, they're trying to claim here, like, this is where you start to get into more of the JQ stuff. This term was mistranslated by the a Alexandrian interpreters of the, Septu of the Septuagint as ta ethnoi, or the nations, or hoi ethnikoi in Greek, and Gentiles in Latin. We elevate and purify the term by returning to it, to its original meaning, hence maintaining the differences in it implies between us and the followers of the Abrahamic faiths and associated values. The term Hellene should suffice to describe what we recur, what we refer to as ethnic way Hellenes. Unfortunately, this term has been denigrated and improperly used in identifying majority Christian Orthodox subjects of a state that uses the adjective Hellenic in violations of its original meaning. So again, we come back to the JQ. They just can't even stay away from it in their website. Like, it, it's in their theology book, it's in their website, it's in, like, they just, they always ascribe everything back to Judaism. And again, is that's it, not a mistranslation of the way it was used. Is it time for the Alex Jones voice now? I think we're getting there. It is absolutely, getting this, is the, this, is this is the, the quote time. that's time for the Alex Jones it. voice. Okay, okay, where am I starting? Where am I starting specifically on here? They're turning all the Greeks Christian. <laughs> <laughs> they turned the friggin' Greeks Christian, anyway. Okay, so just the globalists, as the, uh, the the parent of the affirmation faith, they they made all the they made all the non globalists goyums. They're all goyums. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We all we all know that whenever Alex Jones says globalists, that's that's really what that means. That is really what that means. Yeah. Well, and this is like this post, this page is also where you start to get into the idea of Hellenization, because on the next question, which again, they're bad and didn't bold, it says, what do you think you will achieve by returning to the ancient ways in today's society? We do not just strive for a superficial return to the ancient ways, but on the contrary, for the return to a different kind of person, Hellenic man who will be governed by humanistic values as were first expressed and exhibited by our ancestors, a type of man who will journey on the path to virtue. We struggle to, for the humanization of today's savage society based off of eternal Hellenic values and principles that lead man to the creation of civilization or that led man to the creation of civilization, spiritual cultivation, and wide-ranging interests and tolerance. This will make him a worthy companion of the gods. Today, more than ever, humanity, which has been trapped within a few with few available exits, needs to rediscover the ancient values in order to escape the spiritual and moral swamp it is sunk to. All right, Cyrus, I'm gonna let you see how familiar this sounds. Because you cover people with this kind of rhetoric all the time, except they think Christianity is the answer. So we're looking, uh, we're looking at that last that last bit there, right? Yeah, yeah. we're looking at that last bit. Uh, today, more than ever, humanity has been trapped with few available exits. You should buy gold off my website. It needs to <laughs> rediscover its ancient values. In order to escape the spiritual and moral swamp it is suck into, sunk into, you need to buy brain force. That's how I that think sounds that, to me. But you, you need to buy Hellenism, or you need to Hellenize yourself. Uh, I think that this winds up creating Hellenism as a salvation path. Does it not? This it, That's what this sounds like. It, this is the, the bathe in the blood of the Savior type yeah, of deal this that is we a... get from Christianity, except mm -hmm. it's, it's polyphlated. That's what I was saying. Have you been washed in the Hellenic ethnicoi? Yeah, pretty much. Like, also, <laughs> Sup Nerbardia. Have you been washed in the Nerbardia. blood? <laughs> Have well, you been washed it... in the blood of the globalists? That's, oh oh, that's what this sounds like to me. Yeah, it, actually, yeah, Gainer, uh, Gainer points out, uh, Ocean, I, I'm going to need you to Jesse Lee Peterson the next thing that we bring up. Um, oh, no. But, uh, but you know. yeah, the, the two didn't, the too long didn't read on this is that's actually not a Hellenic view at all. In fact, like part of the reason that Hellenism can have such an interesting, um, you know, like diversity within it is that there were multiple, even existing like concurrently and arguing with each other, you know, through writing, there were multiple philosophical traditions within Hellenism, even within the same city states. Like not only was the religion practiced radically differently between city states, but even within the city states, there were various philosophical schools that practiced it differently, particularly within Athens. Like for example, I'm a Stoic, 
and one of my former friends was a was a Platonist. We have radically different views on what the gods are and what an ethical way to function within society is. And even within, like, even differences in what we think the afterlife happens to be based off of our various philosophical schools. This idea that there's one unified path to virtue and one way to believe in the gods and one unified state, again, is not only ahistorical, but it's anti-Hellenic. Like, they're trying to establish a specific definition of what Hellenic is, when even in ancient Hellas, there was not that definition. It's a very monotheistic, latent Christian view, to use one of Ocean's famous terms. Yeah. I think that latent Christianity is definitely a fit here, because it's it's winding up, it's taking uh, a lot of Hellenism and refitting it into elements of Christianity that made it spread. Uh, mainly the, the guilt-tripping uh, element that anybody who's not part of this hates themselves. Uh, and then the, you get into like an othering aspect and this winds up, I think that if you did a, a bite model comparison, um, you might get pretty successful results with this group given given this rhetoric that we see. Um, yeah, it, it does... they don't have as, they, they do a lot of behavioral and thought, they do a lot of thought control. I would say behavioral control, not so much, but definitely thought control. Mm -hmm. Because I, I have seen them like also. repeat a lot of the same things in a, as a mantra together, uh, that is very restrictive and very othering, um, to the point of of major concern, obviously. Uh, and then this, all of this, winds up confirming it that you know there's actually a lot more below the surface than what they're actually putting out there publicly. Well, and this goes the other SS, um, the other SS uh, screen cap, Suris, um, which we're only going to be reading half of. This is another one where they didn't know how to bold one of their questions. Um, so you, the one that I gave you, an editor, but an yeah, they need to hire an editor. Would delete their shit halfway through. Yeah, um, but there's another question where they say, why are there multiple divisions amongst the amongst the ethnic Hellenes? And this is where the I part of the bite model, where the information control kind of starts to rear its ugly head. Um, they say, let us clarify matters. So taking control here, asserting right away, you know, we're, we are going to tell you the real truth. There is no fragmentation, let alone multiple divisions. The defining characteristics of the ethnic Hellenes were shaped during the developmental phase of the YSEE from 93 to 96, whose clarity invited an all-encompassing official position in 1997. We're the only ones. Of course, since then, various ancestor worshippers and malicious imposters have arrived on the scene. In the latter case, individuals or groups that have been expelled from our organization or have collaborated with our opponents have literally been consumed with a desire to negate the vi validity of the YSEE. This literally As if just this could sounds ever occur like Christian denomination for infighting. Yep. As That's this, this, this could ever is. occur whenever someone in crisis detested our existence and activities. There is therefore absolutely no fragmentation, let alone multiple divisions. Simply put, on the one hand, the, we are organized ethnic Hellenes, and on the other, there are many and varied people with a variety of opinions, pursuits, and designs who do not concern us. They have every right to exist as individuals as long as they do not exploit our name, values, and our ethnic Hellenic religion. But... So I like the I like the word exploit there being being mm -hmm. used specifically as if as if thinking like this does not in and of itself breed a, a, a necessitation of exploitation. Right. It, it has to because it has othering built into it. It has uh, lessering built into it that, that you end up when you have a hierarchy of lesser humans built into your thought process eventually they get exploited that's just how things have worked historically so it's really weird to see don't exploit our religion on there when your particular flavor of that is literally based upon the concept of exploitation that's really awkward yeah, so when you get into that, though, effectively what they're stating is any other Hele Hellenic organization that disagrees with us is automatically one of our enemies, and they must be butthurt. Yeah, and it's that one also sounds like Christian denominationism, where this is the, the, the way it's worked whenever I was a Christian, the way it worked whenever I've talked to people who are, like, really fundamentalist. 
it's always there aren't different kinds of Christians. It's those people aren't Christians. They have different opinions, but they should not carry the name Christian. That's what Catholics say about Jehovah's Witnesses. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses say about Mormons. That's what Mormons say about uh, fundamentalist evangelicals. That's what fundamentalist evangelicals say about Midianites. That's what going on down the list and line that's what this sounds like to me. It's the same language. And it's it's trying so hard to... Correct me if I'm wrong, but so much of the language in here is basically a way of a 12-year-old of, of a writer saying, I'm special, mine's different, mine mm -hmm. is very, very special. Um, and yet it's, it's copying all of its tools from a different opposing religion. Right, but it's special. Well, Believe well, me. And it's a religion almost... that it speaks out against, that it's trying to like regularly criticize throughout it and say, you know, Christians bad, Christians bad, Christians bad. But then it adopts a lot of their strategies and a lot of the rhetoric. And it's almost even worse than that because it's basically like as though they, you know, that little kid found that project on the ground from the other kid and was like, no, I came up with it. It was mine first, and you can't have it. Okay, this none is of the, you this can is have mine it. Now you can meme. make. You, you can make it, you can make one yourself if you want to, but don't call it the same thing as mine because it's mine and mine is special. And it's mine. It, it's only mine. I, it's mine. I did it. Um, don't, don't try to tell me I didn't do it. I know I did it. I know how I did it. Uh, oh my God, I sound like Trump right now. <laughs> she killed you're me. trying to sound like a 12 year old and you sound like Trump. That, that, what does that say about our, <laughs> no, no, not going there. Not going there. Nope. It I says get political that enough he's, on the rage. Remember, remember, this brand of Hellenism is the only brand of Hellenism. Thinking that other brands are even brands is wrong. They have their opinions. We have ours. The only yeah, difference is We really is have a fantastic right. brand of Hellenism. We here. have a fantastic one. It is the best one. It's terrific. Everybody's if I, if I had, this. if I had to talk about how we handle worshiping the gods, ten out of ten. Uh, that's, those... that's what I would say, except for you, you're, the way that your religion doesn't know it's bad. Get out of here. Yeah. You can't call your brand of Hellenism, Hellenism. It's, it's not Hellenism. Okay. It's, it's just not my brand Wrong. of Hellenism is the best brand of Hellenism. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> you see those other brands Ocean, of Hellenism, okay? they're not sending, they're not sending their best people. Okay. They're sending when, murderers. When they say they're sending Hellenists, they're not sending their best people. They're sending zealots. They're sending blasphemers. They're sending Jews. They're sending Jews. <laughs> they're sending Christians. They're sending Muslims. Okay, they're they hate themselves. Okay, guys, they're not Hellenists. <laughs> Everyone who doesn't like me is part of the Jewish cabal. That's what that sounds like. It's bad. Pretty much. Poor poor ocean. We broke. Are y'all fucking done? We broke ocean. <laughs> Ocean thought that I was the only one that did shit like this on stream. <laughs> Little dude, did he know. Dude, I, I did the, you know, they're not sending their best bit on the rage the other day because we were talking about Trump. Like, this kind of shit happens all the oh time. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. And they send we people bro into we my life chat. <laughs> they're not sending their best. They're sending Tonys. They're sending <laughs> MUI Pikachus. They're sending Kalins. <laughs> one second. <laughs> Ocean just yeets away. <laughs> like, nope. <laughs> I'm done I'm with out. this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, it also, excuse, like, I would be like, hey, I'm sorry for swearing on your stream, but, like, this video is going to be instantly demonetized anyway because we're talking about the JQ Ooh. and there's just no way to filter out some of this language. <laughs> oh, your roommate brought you food. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, will, I have. I will be able to eat it for, for uh, a The bit, Lonely but... Stargazer says Ocean did a die. He did. He did. I have. So, Ocean, you may have food, but I have fish. I have fish. D is, is yours is yours fried? No. Okay, because mine's, mine, mine's, mine's fried. It's fried fish. I'm also going to have to wipe off my hands now because I'm holding fried fish. Okay, Matthew so. Minor has the great thing. Fake Hellenism. You people asking all these nasty questions are just fake Hellenist schemers <laughs> who are obviously not friends of the gods. All right, so let's move on <laughs> to so, the next so, ring cap. Well, while we're talking about alienation, though, you talked about othering, and that's actually mm -hmm. a really good transition because earlier we had somebody who 
I'm not sure if they were trolling or not, but they're like, you know, how do they feel about anal things? And we actually have an answer to that question. Um, I have, have an answer them. for it too, but I'll hear yours first. <laughs> Uh, so we have two here. Um, the first, I don't know, do you guys think we should start with the uh, the screen cap from the Greek website, or do you think we should start with the screen cap of the conversation? Uh, let's, let's start with the, the website. Yeah, let's and start with the website, what their official statement is, and then we can get into what the reality is. Okay, so this is the screen cap that says the gay. <laughs> the best name for a screen cap. That thing that Call for an Uprising fans keep on accusing me of. But, like, I, I learned I didn't like it when I tried with a toothbrush, and now we don't talk about it anymore. Anyway. Sean Pritchard, welcome to a hammered out stream. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. This is, this is what happens. This is what happens. All right. So we have up. two conflicting statements here. We'll, we'll start with the first. What is your stance vis-a-vis -vis homosexuality? As mentioned earlier, all decent religions, except people who turn to them, regardless of their individual political, nutritional, sexual, aesthetic, or other personal choices. No decent religion can be concerned with how adults express their sexuality with other consenting adults. Do you right. perform same-sex marriages? No, we do not. Because in the ethnic Hellenic religion, the religious symbolism of marriage is quite specific. That is the union of the male and female element so, which which that also statement, makes them very against trans people right that you that, wind up with a lot we'll of get, fallout from that because there's all kinds of dominoes that. that fall from that statement right um but, so would you like yeah, go me ahead to, would you like me to get into uh what a very uh musical whimsical in particular brand of christianity has to say about anal issues Go for it. <laughs> are you are you okay? <laughs> okay. And dead ocean is scarred. Please in the chat, press H if you've heard this song before. Fuck me in the ass cause I love Jesus. Oh, right. The good Lord would want it that way. <laughs> I remember the first time I heard that song. <laughs> Give me that sweet sensation of a throbbing rationalization. It's just between you and me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Because everyone knows it's the sex that God can't see. Apparently, we have multiple people who just like just came into the stream, and everybody's like, "We're talking about anal." I'm We're sorry, about guys. Anal, all of a sudden, we, we literally had a question like framed an influx that way of people earlier. Just came okay. in and were like, butt stuff. All right, so sorry, anyway. not sorry. Just saying. So we're moving on to, uh, I guess, the, the conversation screenshot where we see what their actual position is beyond what we saw stated on their website. Doggy style. So there's um, somebody sent me this. Uh, obviously, I've removed every you know bit of yeah, we kind of identify identifying information in it. But the person sent me this under confidence and said we could use it. So this is a set of DMs that they sent to the YSCE uh, Twitter account. It's the unknown.png. Okay, got it. Or not the Twitter account, the Facebook account. Yeah. Um, and they were trying to get clarification about whether or not the YSCE would be willing to marry a trans man and a cis woman. Pulling up now. Give me just a second. Boom! Here we are. So this one's a little bit less clear to read. Um, so it's going to take a little bit, a, a hot sec to read it. Um, hello, can I ask, theoretically speaking, would the YSCE be willing to perform a marriage ceremony between a trans couple, such as, say, a trans female, male to female, and a male? Sorry, I got it backwards. Um, the marriage ritual is a representation of the sacred marriage between Zeus and Hera. It is full of fertility symbolism and asks for the gods to bless the couple with children. For this reason, we only perform the ceremony for biological males and females who will probably procreate. Notice the use here of biological male and female. That That's dog whistle language, folks. You've heard it here. Yeah, we've all seen it before. So it's been covered on this channel numerous times. You won't do it if a biological and female is infertile or doesn't want kids, am I correct? Sorry for asking, by the way. I've just been curious. Answer. Marriage is a social construct that we find in all cultures in one form or another. The union of male female is what brings forth life. That is what the ritual is about. As you might know, That's Hellenic a dodge. Was, pretty, was pretty open and tolerant of other forms of sexuality, such as homosexuality, but we do not have any mention of rituals or homosexual marriages. If you have access to the marriage rite that 
that we follow, you will see it clearly as a ritual that highlights the male-female union as life-giving act. For all of these reasons, following our ancestral tradition perform only marriages between biological males and females. If you don't have access to the translated marriage rights in, marriage rights in English, I can send them to you later today so you can see what I'm talking about. That is a fucking... Do they didn't answer the question. They literally well, said if a biological female is infertile, and they dodged it. Well, and this person even calls them on it and never gets a reply. Oh, I do oh, have it. It's in the to. YSCE Theology and Practice book. Yes, it's largely e it's largely even this trans women can give birth if they actually have a womb, which can be done via surgical process. And even then, the answer regarding infertile women has yet to come. I understand the purpose. I'm just a bit skeptical, you could say. No answer. Like, they're not, and they're not going to answer because they've been caught in it. This is what happened when, um, Ocean, if you remember, uh, me and you versus Mike Winger. Right? Yes. So when we had the conversation with Mike Winger, Mike Winger says that it's the it's the ability to procreate that separates gay marriage from... Uh, yeah, he did the same thing. He did the exact same thing, separating yep. uh, gay, gay marriage and heterosexual marriage because specifically ability to procreate. And when I brought up the issue of, well, hold on, what about like an infertile female? Doesn't that... That's in the same category. No, 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 that's different. Why, Mike? Why is it different? You still haven't right. a you still haven't answered that. It's been a fucking year, you coward. <laughs> I'll get back to you. I'm on sorry. That. He's a little bitch. <laughs> well, and uh, I'm going to point out the fact that their marriage ceremony, which you know, I can send it to you, sirs, if you want to examine it. Their marriage ceremony was written by them. This isn't some ancient ceremony that was passed down in books or other things. It mirrors some of the ones you find in literature, but there's absolutely nothing that says that they had to make it even, a fertility right. You could right. modify it. Even if they did, even if they did try to argue that we have to adhere this way, that's an appeal to antiquity. Right. This is the, like, the whole purpose okay. of Reconstructionism is to get rid of that. It's sort of. So there's, there's, when you, uh, one of the things that you wind up finding out as a Reconstructionist now, this is one of the things that can be hard for recon recons to get their mind around sometimes. That in trying to reconstruct an ancient faith, you realize that these ancient faiths evolved within their cultural contexts. That their understanding of morality changed over time, right? This is the reason why a modern heathen does not have to support slavery because the uh, Icelandics practice thraldom. You know, like this is that's that doesn't become a, ne a necessity in a re for, for a reconstructionist. You can simply say, I having like civilization has has come to certain realizations about elements of morality. This includes the an understanding about slavery. We've moved from a period of time in which slavery was accepted into a modern time where we realize arguments against that and agree with them. So there's no need to import it. Now, the problem with that is that Christians will have like this document that has, uh, you know, the word of God is sitting there of saying, you know, giving regulations and rules on slavery. Heathens don't have that kind of, first, we don't have that kind of text. And second, that kind of thing doesn't exist in the text that we have. So there's no need for that kind of importation. But we can also, look when you, in looking at recon, you see that evolution of morality and you can apply that process of moral evolution into a modern practice of the faith. Uh, so what YSCE is doing here is they're saying, we wrote this ritual and we will not evolve our understanding as arguments become revealed to us because reasons. There isn't because the, all the reasons they provided about this being a fertility ritual, that can be amended, right? Well, in order to recognize a marriage within their community. But they won't do it because, and when you get into the real root of the issue is, it's because their, their objection is rooted in simple bigotry. Well, and on top of that, the idea of the divine union between Zeus and Hera, like even ancient Greek like marriage rights, there was some elements of fertility to the marriage right, but there was also this idea of property, possession, and you know passing down 
the you know the bloodline and the woman being given into the the man's house like no longer belonging to the father and now belonging instead to the husband which by the way for the comment that was made earlier about like zeus and and rape and all that stuff the ancient greek idea of sexual consent was very very different than what we understand today like a woman did not have like a woman's idea of consent did not exist in ancient greece which is another thing that hellenism doesn't carry into the modern day right. like if if you wanted to have sex with a man's wife all you had to do was ask him it wasn't considered to be some sort of sin to do that if he gave you permission and if you were higher ranking than him you didn't even have to ask you just did it mm -hmm. like she was property in the same way that you could use his house you could use his wife so that whole like Zeus rapes people thing in the Greek conceptualization, he's the highest ranking thing that exists. So he was allowed to do that stuff. Mm. But again, you don't see I that have... built into the marriage ceremony either, even though that was a part of traditional Greek marriage ceremonies. Right, because where our understanding morality has evolved and we can recognize these things fairly easily. And polytheistic approaches, especially reconstructionist approaches, allow for that kind of evolution to be applied very easily whereas you know when a lot of people that come from christianity and they look at that and they're like uh how does that function um because we don't view like your text the, isn't as rigid is what it right we don't view it the same to. way it's it's not infallible in the same sense you know what i mean um so you know it's it's more akin to say a uh episcopalian or uh, Celtic Christian or something like that. Some of the more progressive forms of Christianity where they don't view the Bible in a rigid, uh, infallible word of God sort of way. They view it as a text that was written by humans. Um, polytheists generally are the same way. And now we have this YSEE situation where not only do they not view their texts in this way, but they are uh, viewing their own creative texts as as infallible uh, as infallible which creates a giant problem because at that point what justification anything, do you have yeah if None. any if anything i write is infallible how can you argue with me why even right. have a conversation with me there's no point to have a conversation with me because i've already concluded right well, and I, I apply, I posted something in the side chat. Ashley Gouch is me in that chat, by the way. Um, I'm also one of Cirrus's mods on the Discord. If you guys want to DM me and ask about the Zeus and Hera thing, it's a lot more complicated than they hate each other, had a bad marriage. Like, I get really annoyed from people saying that every time I talk about my sure. religion. Sure. So if y'all want to know more about that, like, I t actually have done, I can send you a link to an interview that I did where I explained it in depth. Um, there's also some stuff that I've posted for somebody else who asked for it that I'm happy to forward to you. But the point here, though, is that their theological justification is shaky at best because they wrote the ritual that they're referencing, and the ritual that they're referencing is based on an even more heinous, even more possessive-based ancient ritual that basically reduced a woman down to property. In fact, a lot of Greek women would actually become prostitutes in order to escape the idea of having to become property by marriage. It gave them some level of rights that an, a married woman would not have. This and so a lot of Greek women became temple States prostitutes. Too. During the expansion era of the United States, as we were expanding westward, that happened a lot as well. Many women would actually gain more independence by being a brothel worker than by being married as a housewife. That's That wasn't an uncommon thing here either. Yeah, so again, we're not trying to reconstruct the culture, we're trying to reconstruct the faith. And... You know, it's hard to sometimes talk about the distinctions to somebody who's not as informed on it, because a lot of people also are used to Christianity where the faith and the culture are synonymous, or at least that's what they're claimed to be, because there's this ineffable word that is said to be unchangeable, whereas most pagans see our myths more as containing truth, but not themselves true. In other words, they're, you know, truths about the gods that were interpreted through a cultural lens. So, uh... I guess we ha do we have how many screenshots do we have left? We have one more, I think. Uh, yeah, we've got two more, and this is the the harassment and toxic behavior. So sure. we've covered why uh, the let's, cover, let's let's get through this. As we'll have to move this one uh, through this one very quickly, fairly quickly, because we do want to wrap things up uh, in a timely manner, so that we have like um, that you know rewatchability value and length on on YouTube and all that. So let's uh, I guess which uh, screenshot do you want to pull up? Um, I wanted to start with the the larger of the two screen caps. Uh, the the Goyim post by a cultist. 
Oh, that one. Okay. So cool. remember we mentioned earlier about Scarlet Magdalene and mm -hmm. um, Occultus and uh, Angolonasios. So Angolonasios actually retweeted several of these after these screenshots were taken, and that's part of the reason why we took them. Um, and later, Occultus actually was banned, so you can't find a lot of this stuff. You just kind of have to take the screenshots on faith that they are being honest, because he got banned for his shitty rhetoric. But after Nasios got kicked off of Patheos or quit or whatever the fuck happened, again, we can't really tell, um, he basically claimed that Scarlet, who had, again, just published an article about folkism and how it's a problem within Hellenism, was harassing him. Occultus launches into a very JQ, and we're pulling this up as an example. This is the kind of behavior that this rhetoric produces. Right. It is indeed unfortunate that you think you can be both a priestess of a Goyim deity slash witch and Jewish at the same time when all biblical and Labinic literature of your people would recommend the death penalty for you. Maybe this anger is due to being an outcast or just ugly. The next Which set is, of screenshots. As Scarlet, for, for those that, like, you know, I would assume that most people in the audience are not familiar with Scarlet. Scarlet is a uh, Judaism uh, and Hellenic syncreticist um, mm -hmm. who's very outspoken. And uh, syncretism generally within the polytheistic community is fine. But that's this is another thing that winds up when you get into this like ethnic protectionism is that syncreticism winds up being looked down upon. I made a Twitter thread on this actually fairly recently with somebody who was doing similar shit. Um, that you know, you and this person is taking anti-Semitism, applying it to this Hellenic ethno uh, ethnocentric protectionism, and then using it to just like blast this person for having a syncretic status. Uh, and syncretism, for those who don't know, is the combining of two polytheistic faiths or two faiths in general. Uh, you can be like this is syncreticism winds up with Christo pagans. It By winds the up way, with Christianity does this all the time on accident. Right. Uh, so Christianity is itself syncretic, especially Catholicism. Catholicism is extremely syncretic. Like, um, but uh, you know, like I've met se several people that are syncretic with. I'm syncretic with. Uh, like I have adopted Fortuna into um, my pantheon of the, as a heathen, uh, and several people do this, and it's a, it's a considered entirely reasonable, especially when you acknowledge the existence of multiple gods. Um, and acknowledge the existence of other pan pantheons, but uh, Surus is gone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it gets seen as bad, according to these people. They start well, freaking and, out. And there's another, Image Zero is the other one. This is the continuation of this tirade. And I got wanted it. to show, like, I got permission from Scarlet to show these because I wanted to show just how abusive these people got. Mm-hmm. You can't be a member of an ethno-religious community when you fail each and every standard and requisite. Hashtag doesn't work this way. Hashtag neo-pagan. Hashtag BS. Hashtag mess. Hashtag thoughts. Professes to be a member of all these communities. She's a member of none. In fact, she's been kicked out of a couple for being batshit crazy. The pagan fraud with her numerous fake profiles locked her main Twitter account. Of course, the rest are open so she can keep an eye on the rest of us. A coward that hides in the shadows and doesn't even defend her assertions. Worthless. I've, I've engaged with... Scarlet often before and even disagreed with her and I, the one thing that I can say about her is she is not cowardly at all. <laughs> Scarlet she will is, start a fucking fight with you dude. She is very straightforward and we'll we'll call we'll call people out on their bullshit. Um like you know I don't always agree with her but like sh she will straight up tell you what she thinks and um the the, the this characterization of her is it's entirely inaccurate. Um, yeah, Scarlet is a, you know, Scarlet's actually the one, one of the people who started the Xenia Declaration, um, which, again, is our, is the equivalent to our middle finger to the racists. It basically states that, you know, Hellenism is open to all and that any, anybody who discriminates like that is not welcome in our communities. You know, that's what Xenia is a, you know, much like you talk about Frith and Grith, Xenia is our version of Hellenic hospitality. It is right. kindness to, you know, one outside of one's own house, even greater than that to the way you would treat your friends or family. And for anybody that wants to be a smart aleck in the comments or in the uh, chat, because I know that there's at least going to be one person uh, who probably agrees with half the things that have been posted in the image screenshots, which would be very telling. Um <clears throat> Before any of you smartasses decide to be the person that goes, oh, I get it. 
Uh, so it's bad for them to be intolerant, but you're allowed to be intolerant of them. Uh, so before, much for the intolerant left. <laughs> yes, before any of so you uh, galaxy-brained geniuses decide <laughs> to uh, disperse the absolutely infertile cum that is your thoughts all over the screen, uh, let me go ahead and let you know right now, there's this little thing called the intolerance paradox, and it covers this very, very handedly, and if you don't know what that is, there, this is for two separate people. If you are the type of person saying this dumb shit and you don't know what that is, ask your parents. They can also get you the key to your basement. If you are somebody who at <laughs> least who, who legitimately wants to understand what this is, you can DM me. I can help you with that later. Sorry. I, I wanted to get that out there. So sorry that we went over time a little bit, um, but oh, I wanted to get that stuff out. Like if Absolutely. anybody ever doubted that these sorts of beliefs as dog whistly as they are could produce very nasty outcomes, like those are just two examples. We have a bunch of screenshots from both of them before one of them got banned and the other one deactivated their Twitter account. And there are more, like there are multiple other, you know, members of the YSE who have gone on harassment campaigns and ranted about, you know, quote, dirty Slavs and Turks, dirty Hungarians, dirty Jews, all these other things. When you have hateful rhetoric as the basis of your theology, this is the behavior it produces. Right. So like, that's why we wanted to expose. So to answer the question in, you know, posed by the title, what do you guys think? Is the YSE a bigoted pagan sect? Yeah, that that's where I'm sitting. Drop a drop an H in the chat if you think that the YSE is is a bigoted sect. Yep, um, we, we'll we'll I'll close out H. to H's. We'll close yeah, out. We'll to close H's. out to H's. We'll we'll have various variations. Achins. Variations. <laughs> I've used that joke <laughs> multiple times, and I've lost friends every time. But it's been well worth it <laughs> every single time. Just throwing that out there, in case you didn't know. Um, anywho, do the we want to, I guess, go over a few super chats and then we can close out? Uh, uh, let me see here. So the first issue I'm running into is that I actually do not know. Uh, ah, okay. There's only two super chats to get into before we leave or before we're uh -huh. done. <clears throat> so the, 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 aside from the ocean that a die one that we definitely referenced when it came up from fourth dimensional Jake for $2 youth pastor said, Jesus has a hard on for us. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost as bad as the girl that responded to me saying Kent Hoven is my spirit daddy. Oh, God. Uh, you, when you sent me that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just give you guys a little bit of, like, tell you all the story. I, Suris shoots me a message and is like, dude, you need this. You don't know that you do, but you do. And you need to watch only the first 12 seconds. I was like, what the fuck? And it's, it, I let it go. I was like, I'll, I'll check this later. And I come back like a couple hours later and I look at it and I'm like, I see the first 12 seconds and I'm like, <laughs> what in fuck? And it's <laughs> sent a message to service that basically, I think, I think it was in all caps, what in fuck? <laughs> so uh, like this, this is, it was, it was beyond me. Before I get into the next super chat, I wanted to give a very quick shout out before we go. Um, Somebody beat me to my response video to that, actually. Oh, no. Uh, a smaller channel uh, named Dead Nation, who's actually got pretty good production values. Awesome. Um, went ahead and tackled, uh, or is beginning a series on this person who I tackled. Um, so that will be interesting to see. I watched the first video. I liked it a lot. Hopped into the guy's Discord right afterwards. But uh, that said, the next thing, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, guy, I haven't actually inquired about gender, so if I'm wrong, I'll find out the hard way, I'm sure. Um, mm. The next thing is the last super chat from Lonely Stargazer for $5. The Greeks were so G like hella G, YouTube won't... Oh, YouTube won't let me say gay. <laughs> the Greeks were so gay. You'd almost say they were so gay they had uh, they had orgies with food and vomiting. I'm pretty Literally. sure Dead, Na Dead Nation. If, if Dead Nation is un is formerly Undead Meowth, if they're the same person, I'm pretty sure it's a she she her pronouns. Okay. Because hmm. um, I'm pretty person. sure they're in our Discord. If it is the same person. Yeah, I've talked with Undead Meowth, uh, and yeah, she. Um, okay. I know that uh, I know that their Discord is called the Atheist Nightmare. <laughs> it's got a little banana. Uh, it's got a picture of Ray Comfort. Close <laughs> All right. So, 
All right, you guys can close out, or you can let me shill again, or whatever you guys want to do. Yeah, yeah let's definitely shill. Let's shill. Uh, I'll shill. I'll shill first before jumping into that and say that hey, hey, uh, Ocean Keltoy, I have a pro I have a channel as well. Go, go, like and subscribe and all that jazz, and I'll drop a link in the chat. Also, I've been doing Twitch lately. Same deal. Um, and I have two channels that I'm a part of. Both of them are in the description. Um, the Rage is the first one. Uh, that's the channel that I share with that was formerly known as the Raging Atheist. I am launching within the next week a new series of my own called the Pissed Off Polytheist, but currently I co-host two different shows on that uh, channel. I co-host Seeing Red with Nakasuchi, and I co-host the Skeptical Literary Circle every Tuesday night at 10.30 EST with um, Divine Disbelief. If you guys, like, I know that Cirrus tends to end, you know, edge towards educational stuff. If you guys really enjoy exploring, like, history and philosophy and things like that, you should totally check out our, our weekly show. Like, it is woefully underwatched at the moment because it is so new, but um, we're going through week by week, and at the end of our current book, we're going to be putting up a poll to let you guys decide what the next book should be. Um, the other channel that I help that I help out with is uh, Sticks and Stonehenge. Again, the conceit of that is there's five of us, and we are all different pagan religions, and we talk about current events and other things from a pagan perspective. We have a response coming out very, very soon to. Um, I'm trying to actually remember because I, I usually refer to him as this freaking guy, uh, Spirit Science, which is neither science nor particularly spiritual. Uh, we're going after their Sumerian epic in a series called Sumerian Epic Fail, where our native Sumerian reconstructionist oh, completely up. tears that apart. They fuck up Sumerian and Egyptian on like a regular fucking basis. Like the amount of the amount of like shit takes on Thoth that uh, that spirit science has is ridiculous. The amount of shit um, takes that spirit science has is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm just I'm just talking about from a religion misrepresentation Iron perspective. Oh, but if you want to broaden city. it into literally anything they say. It's dead city, not dead nation. So one, dead city. one uh, Tony Designs did say, yes, she, so apologies for the misgendering. Uh, two, dead city, not dead nation. And here is the... And dead city, dead city is undead Meowth. That is the yeah. person I was thinking of. And yeah. there is the link to the video in specific if any of you guys would like to watch it. There we go. Um, and so for those of you, somebody asked about face reveal. The only reason I'm not on camera right now is because the guys moved my uh, working desk upstairs and I'm currently not able to stream from the room that they moved my working desk to because it is not soundproof and echoes like a sumbitch. So I am currently streaming from my bedroom and sitting on my bed, which I which is not very good camera material. So as soon as we're able to actually uh, potentially soundproof the way that we had in my office, then I'll be back on camera. But for right now, I'm showing out with my avatar because that's what I'm able to do. And there's a badass avatar as well. Oh yeah, uh, Gaelic Knox does excellent art. Um, Emmett actually did all of the artwork for um, all of the response videos and stuff that we're doing. Cool. So again, check out Sticks and Stonehenge, check out The Rage. Uh, we've got an interesting conversation coming up tomorrow night on The Rage. Uh, Nakasuchi's gonna be going after Sky Out in a debate and I'm gonna be moderating. So I have no idea how that shit show came about, but it's about to happen. So if y'all wanna see a you know a completely idiotic Poe get utterly destroyed, um, if that's your shindig, like if you like those kinds of dumpster fires, that's going on tomorrow. And also, uh... Uh, Susan mentions in the chat as well about Secular Literary Circle. Um, so I guess we'll show that one more time and then we'll call it a day. Yeah. Yeah, Susan's also uh, over on Divine Disbelief. If you guys haven't checked them out, they've got a big video premiere coming out tomorrow that you guys are going to be interested in too. Awesome. Um, but yeah, Secular Literary Circle, 7 p.m. PST, 10.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard. Um, we're Again, we're studying the history of the afterlife, like where Hell Belief came from. So if you guys are curious, like how that evolved, you'll really enjoy the show. We're going to be talking, funnily enough, about Platonism this coming episode. We're going to be talking about the Platonic view of the afterlife and how his idea of rewards and punishments kind of started to shift the perspective on what was possible in the afterlife. Awesome. Uh, I guess I'll hand it back to you, Cyrus. Um, banana. Banana. Um, pudding. Is an uh, atheist nightmare. And um, pizza. I had to go with the, the nightmare, the neutral, and the sustenance for atheists. <laughs> um, you choose which one is which. Anyway, that all said, I wanted to say uh, thank you, Aliakai, for stopping in and helping us with this episode and providing all the screenshots and references and doing a majority of the background work with Ocean uh, to get this started up, done, set in. Um, also, wanted to thank Ocean uh, and 
for what? I'm not really certain. And hi, Growlithe. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't thank me for anything specific. <laughs> thank, thank you for you existing, for... Ocean. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Uh, 10 out of 10. And that said... I hope you guys enjoyed well. the episode. Uh, if you did, leave a like. If you didn't, you've already told me in the comment section how much you hate me and probably all the things you want to happen to me in a prison cell. Don't worry, your spirit daddy Hovind already had them happen to him for literally nine years. So, Ooh. Anyways, that all said, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you later. And so see the video tagline here.